Here on Living St. Louis, we love it when we experience an I didn't know that moment. Even better, we get to pass on what we've learned to you. It's Patrick Murphy's turn to do just that about a community you thought you knew. When most St. Louisans think of the suburb of Ladue, images come to mind of stately homes, country clubs, elegant parks, and elite private schools. Along Clayton Road are architectural remnants from before the Civil War. The Ladue Market still retains much of the small town atmosphere it had when it opened as Myers Market in the 1930s. But before its famous zip code of 63124 became synonymous with taste and wealth, there were other stories, revealing a past very different from the Ladue of today. Former writer for the Globe Democrat and founder of the original Ladue News, Charlene Bree, has chronicled over 150 years of these stories in a recent book, Ladue Found. There was Woodland Grove, still standing, which was built in the 1850s as a stagecoach stop. More familiar to us today is Bush's Grove. It was a local center of commerce in the midst of farmland and dirt roads, a place where a hardworking farmer who happened to imbibe a bit too much after a day of trading would be directed to a cot where he could sleep it off. And the next morning, Mr. Bush, who owned the uh, Bush's Grove at that time, would say, listen, it's time to get up, take them down to their wagons, where they came in their covered wagons and, and horses, and send them back home to their farms. At the corner of Clayton and Lindbergh, T.T. Dwyer ran his combination blacksmith shop, tavern, post office, and general store a center of commerce and politics. While conducting her research, Bree found some previously undiscovered public records that surprised her, revealing a darker side of Ladue's past. A slave census from 1850 and another one from 1860, those are the only two years that the county recorded slaves. And actually, the census taker would go out to the farms to see if there were slaves and the, sometimes the owners would hide them. I have the chills right now, even just talking about it, it seems like such a part of history of the county that it's never been brought out, at least in Ladue for sure, and maybe other places. And I could see that there were at least 50 slaves, probably many more, but I could account for 50 slaves. In the 1890s, city folk could take the Missouri Pacific to a country fair or as this poster claims, visitors could find products of the farm, garden, and orchard in great profusion. In the early years of the 20th century, new modes of transportation made a trip to Ladue even easier. But what gave Ladue its major boost before the First World War was the growing popularity of a game involving a small ball and a club. The golf boom came when people became interested in golf. Uh, they began buying property in the county because the county was much less expensive and also in the city the land was too precious and they didn't have enough of it for a golf course. The bogey club came, the log cabin club came, and then St. Louis Country Club bought the property that belonged to the Archbishop and then they came here. Golf first started bringing people, executives with money. But as people were playing golf and coming out to the country club, they, they kept on saying, oh, well, it's so beautiful here. And there were epidemics in the city and the country was becoming more and more popular at that time. And so they began to move uh, to Ladue and to other places in the county too, but to Ladue in particular, because that's where the country clubs were. And of course, to reinforce that, then the private schools started coming. And the private schools, First Boroughs, Mary Institute, and Country Day, uh, people liked living in an area with all these good schools and they could, that they could go to. In fact, the high school, the public high school, Ladue didn't start until the 1950s, so they depended on these wonderful and very uh, uh, acclaimed private schools. 
It wasn't until 1936 that three small villages combined to form the city of Ladue, named after Peter Albert Ladue, a 19th century developer, entrepreneur, and a bit of a rascal who skipped town when his business collapsed. But before incorporation, the city fathers had one more piece of business that had to be taken care of. There was a madam <laughs> that lived in Ladue, and uh, her name was Madam Trainer. And, um, and this was in the 1920s, and um, there was many a missing men at dinner time, and everybody knew where to go to find them, and that was at Mrs. Trainer's house. So when Ladue became a city, one of the first laws was against prostitution. So Mrs. Madam Trainer was out. We can rediscover the past, but we can't change it. And so it is the stories of its people, prostitutes, farmers, slaves, shopkeepers, laborers, and business leaders, which have given shape to the rich history of Ladue and clues to what it is today.